Welcome back. It's something we talk about a lot on the show, the gender pay gap. And here's an example of the reality behind the gender pay gap. Let's take a full look. Large dark roast for Carol. This looks a little low. Large dark roast for Lucy. Uh, mine has even less. Cool. Anthony, got a large dark roast. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, watch out. <laughs> so full. Very hot and very full. Okay, so we get it's a joke, but according to statistics from Lean In, black women earn on average 37% less than their white male counterparts. And this Monday, July 31st, is equal pay day for black women. The date marks how much longer black women must work to take home what their male coworkers earn in just 12 months. And joining us with her perspective, we welcome Associate Professor of Sociology, Dr. Jeffrey Ann Wilder, with the UNF hey. Race Institute. Welcome. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey. We love having you. All right, so what needs to happen for society to take this seriously and notice that the gender pay <clears throat> inequality is a real problem? Mm. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So there needs to be a lot of things that happen on the individual level. So employees, employers need to understand the severity and the, the depth mm -hmm. of the issue. And also things need to happen on the institutional level. So, you know, our government needs to think of more punitive ways to punish people for not making sure that there is equity and that we can do things to make sure that there is parity when it comes to women getting paid. Because as you can tell from these numbers, there's a big difference mm -hmm. for people doing the same exact job. And it's mm -hmm. been like that for years. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think employers, you mentioned employers need to recognize mm -hmm. Do you think that there ever will come a time that they do recognize it and acknowledge it and try to do something to fix it? Because to some of them in their minds, they may be thinking, well, what you won't do, I'll get the next one to do it. I think that, that definitely there's a piece of it. I think there are different stages. So the acknowledgement, sure. I think people, it doesn't take much for people to see and acknowledge and recognize, yes, there's an issue. I don't think there's a whole lot of denial there. But really reaching, taking those steps to make sure that there really is parity and equity among all women, regardless of their race, mm -hmm. Um, that's going to be a lot more difficult to do. And it's harder because there are a lot of um, institutions that salaries are private information. It's yeah. not widely shared. Mm -hmm. I mean, I work at the university where you can go on a website and, and look at someone's, um, oh, wow. I do, I'm, at least once a week, just to see. <laughs> just, right. just I'm going to find out. This is so like know. that. It's like that in the entertainment business. I mean, you've had a lot of, you know, the white actors to say they don't get paid what the white male yeah. actors get. And then, you know, you put a Viola Davis yes. and a Meryl Streep together, and it's like this. Yeah. Yes. And it's just like that in comedy as well. As a black female comic, I don't get paid what my black male comic colleagues get, mm. and they don't get paid what a white female yeah. wow. comic gets. It's, it's very, very just skewed all now, over the place. Now, do y'all think that comes from they don't see value? and people of color? Absolutely, hmm. without a doubt. But, but, they're the, but they're quick to run to us when they want it to be done the right way, though. Yeah, and I think the other thing is, I don't okay. know if we... <laughs> Well, I don't know okay. if there's that enough <laughs> strategies in place for women of all races to be more proactive to get their money. Um, it's really, really difficult. I remember when I got my first job out of, out of graduate school at the university, um, having a conversation with my department chair at the time, who's no, no longer here, um, asking him about more money. And it was like, I felt like I was, I had to take notes and I was reading mm -hmm. from the script and I was fumbling around. And we get and, labeled as well. Oh, yeah. right. You know, if a man stands up for himself, he's being a man, he's being a businessman. Being yeah. We go in yep. there and say, look, I deserve such and such, I've contributed such and such, such and right. such, mm -hmm. you know what we get called. Right. right. You get yeah. You know, and if we get labeled that, yes. God help us, and then the we end up doing woman. sofa commercials. Mm -hmm. But as yeah. a <laughs> But that's a really good commercial, though. But they pay well. Yes. Really yes. <laughs> but so as a commercial. sociologist, is there a way to trace this back to a particular event or, or era? This goes back to World War One, World War Two, when there were a lot more women entering the labor force because the men were going out to war, mm -hmm. right? And we already know that there are some women, particularly women of color, black women in particular, who have never had the opportunity or the luxury to stay at home, to be stay-at-home moms. Mm -hmm. They've always been working. The help. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Um, you know, up until the 1960s, there were a lot of black women, concentrations of black women who were employed in more domesticated, you know, roles where there was no even discussion about equal pay. Right, because, they didn't even get minimum wage. Right, there was no union, there was nothing like that. Yeah. Right, so that's been going on for a lot. So during the JFK administration in 1963, we had the passage of the Equal Pay Act, which um, was meant to redress sex-based discrimination when it came to uh, work. Unfortunately, we didn't see as, as many strides as we wanted to. Mm -hmm. the very first bill that President Obama um, sort of signed into law when he became president in 2009 was the um, 
the Lilly Ledbetter Act, which yeah. is really meant yeah. to redress equal pay. Okay. So I think it's important that these things keep coming up in administration, but again, trying to get people to follow the law, that's a really difficult thing oh, to yeah. do. Yeah, because yeah. the hard. states mandate themselves, right. and then you get down right. to the counties and right. the cities. And the one day, and one day we'll be sitting here talking about it, and it'll be, hey, isn't it great to be paid equally? Yeah, well, we one, that one day, day they're yeah. thinking it's going to be 2059. It's going to take uh, until 2059. Like Ooh, 2059. Wow. So two CEOs, that. one male, one woman, one woman, and the male will always make more than the woman, even though they're the exact same position, sex, exact same title. They'll take 2059 for them to be for, equal. For, for there That's to disgusting. have parity, because what we already know, for every dollar that, that a woman, you know, a, a white woman makes, then you've got women of color, black women making what 68 cents mm -hmm. uh, to that. Cents on the uh, Native yep. American women, 59 cents. Asian American women, 80 cents. So it's just, you know, we got a lot. So we just, yeah, I don't think just, so. I think so it's millennials. Just, I think millennial, more millennial companies are coming up, and you know, I think startups are being well, more aware I, of that. Yeah, but I think they're definitely more aware. But they're implementing policy that they're actually keeping equal pay among men women among different colors, different races. So I yeah. think things are going to change maybe sooner than we think with millennial corporations. I hope so. And I hope that those millennials are also addressing motherhood because that's when really yeah. women really start to lose not the yet, gap. Yeah. Right? Not yet. They're not having babies. Well, yeah. so, they're just starting But if they're employing so. women <laughs> in their companies who yeah. are mothers, that's when women mm -hmm. lose the most ground when they become mothers. I have a five-year-old too. Okay. Um, and I'm just fortunate enough that I have the type of job that offers me the type of flexibility to be mm -hmm. that mother, mm -hmm. you know, as a single and by being what I do, you know, I right. just take them with me around, right. you know, right. I'm able to afford a nanny, thank God. Right, but that's really when women see that pay gap widen even more when they yeah. decide to become moms. One day, guys, yeah. one day. All right, something else that we wanted to get your take on. There's a, there's a new study out of Georgetown Law Center on poverty and inequality. The report found that society's perception of black girls versus white girls of the same age differs starting at the age of five. Among the perceptional differences, black girls seem older than white girls of the same age. They need less nurturing, less protection, less support, and less comfort than white girls. Dr. Wilder, you read this study. Are you, are you surprised by this? This is alarming. This is very alarming, personally and professional. Again, mm -hmm. I just mentioned I have a five-year-old, mm -hmm. and it's funny because daughter, I was a five-year-old girl, and I, it's funny because people are starting to make comments about my daughter about how smart she is and how mature she is, and oh, she just, you know, they're kind of advancing her age, partly because she's tall, um, but, you know, I kind of have a different perspective on that now. Like, you know, why are people saying that she's mature? Mm -hmm. Does that mean that they're starting to advance her and think of her as more of an adult compared to, you know, her white female counterparts in the classroom? So this study is um, not necessarily surprising, definitely alarming, but it puts us, it, it was designed to kind of, you know, put us on notice, to bring us a call to action, mm -hmm. to do more research, um, and to really start to advocate and understand that this is not just an issue for black males, this is also an issue for black females as well. Absolutely. Well, why do you think this perception even exists? <laughs> well, so let's huh. go back to, uh, how many centuries how should we go got? back? As yeah. far back as you want to go, Dr. <laughs> yes. Wilder. That many. Because well, I, have my, I yeah. have my theory on that. Well, I mean, just from, you know, from going to college, I remember, you know, um, black girls tend to have the apron string cut a lot sooner yes. than my that's white true. girlfriends. That's I grew up true. in a predominantly white neighborhood, mm -hmm. and things I knew how to do, my white girlfriends did not. Mm -hmm. And we're 15, 16, getting ready to go to college, mm -hmm. and they're like, how do you do mm -hmm. that? What do you, I'm like, mm -hmm. and I'm like, don't you, you know? Mm -hmm. But that's the perception that, you know, when, when I could look over the counter, my grandmother had me on a seat teaching yes. me how to cook, yes. Yes. teaching me how to do this wash. and wash dishes mm -hmm. and all this. So yes. I knew I knew how to sort clothes yes. and yes. when yes. to use bleach and when not to use bleach. And yep. it was just, you know, the apron string seems to be cut sooner with black women mm -hmm. and black girls mm -hmm. than it is white women. But it's funny because most men want the damsel in distress. Yes. And mm -hmm. we are taught not to be one yes. when in all actuality that's what men want. Yeah. They want to be Captain save a chick yeah. And if you're coming in knowing how to do everything and they can't tell you what to do, that's yeah. why a lot of us yeah. are single. Yeah. That's called control. Wow. <laughs> That's a really great insight. Well, thank you, Dr. Wilder, yeah. as always, for coming in. Yeah. Broadening our horizons. Drop the mic. Expanding the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> always. Hey, All right, it. stay with us. We'll be right back.